For those who just joined us, welcome to today's webinar. Today is the third webinar. Um, we've been going through a brief intro into teaching with video, which was on Tuesday. And um, we covered some stuff from a learning design perspective and also from a video perspective. Yesterday, we went more in depth with regards to narrated PowerPoint. Um, and we did some demos. And then today, we're going to be looking at open cost. So, I would like you to just sit back and take in as much information as you can. Um, don't worry about taking notes. These sessions are recorded. And at the end of the week, we will be sharing um, the recordings and the resources with the participants. Um, but if at the end of the webinar, you still feel like you haven't got the answer to what you're looking for, you're welcome to email um, the DMU for one-on-one -on -one consultations. And I'll drop that email in the chat as well. Um, but how this process will work is my presenters today are Lauren Butler. Um, like I said, she's a learning design at SALT. And then Stefan Stein is a fellow video producer. Um, while they are presenting, I would ask that if you have any questions that you pop them in the chat, but if it's something specific to what they are demonstrating on screen, um, then you would just raise your hand. Um, the raise your hand button is now in the reactions um, tab right at the bottom of Zoom, I see, or you could just um, unmute yourself um, and ask your question, but try and keep your questions into the chat. Um, there's Rai, there's Mashudu and myself, we'll be trying to answer as many questions as you can, as we can, um, as the webinar session goes on. And then I just want to highlight that today's session, which I said is focusing on open cost. Um, we'll be looking at accessing the lecture videos um, tool with Lauren, as well as embedding in lecture uh, in lesson. Sorry. Um, so this Lauren will be taking us through, and then handing over to Stefan, who will be showing us how to record in OpenCost, and then the captions and transcripts process, and then the available downloadable um, formats for your recordings. So that's the main focus of today. Um, if you haven't joined the rest of the sessions this week, we've just trying to be, um, we've just tried to reiterate the importance of teaching with video. And the reason being is that because we are in face-to-face -face learning and we can't see our students, it's really important to have a different form of engagement um, that is not necessarily just a narrated PowerPoint with a voiceover. Um, and the reason why video is so crucial is that it creates a form of intimacy and engagement when you have the comfortability of seeing someone's face speaking um, to you, as opposed to just listening to someone's voice and you can't see who the person is. Um, and so it's not to make anyone self-conscious or shy, because I know people have um, a lot of self-conscious complex um, abilities about being on camera, but it's really just to, to give the student that comfortability of knowing like they are looking at the lecturer as if they would have been looking in a normal um, lecture venue setting, um, even though they don't have the ability to stick up their hand and ask questions like they normally would. It's just comforting to know that there is a face with the voice. So it is five past two. I'm going to hand over to Lauren, I think first, who will be taking us through the first part, which is accessing the lecture videos tool and embedding in lessons. And then from there, I'm going to hand over to Stefan. Thank you, Laura. Okay. And um, welcome everybody again. Um, so yesterday we ended off quite um, in, in a bit of a rough where I ran through how to um, add videos to your lessons tool. Um, and today we'll be starting with that. So we ended off with it yesterday and we're starting with it today so that we can get it out of the way and you can all hang on Stefan's lips about recording your videos in OpenCast, who is the, the main the leading man of this um, video, Teaching with Video webinar. Um, so I want to share my screen, please, Stefan, if you could stop yours okay now i'm looking for uh, 
Give it a Okay. Is it up? Can everybody see? Yes, we can see it. Well, I can see it. Okay, it should be fine. So um, I'm, I'm going to first show you how to add Lex videos to your Villa site. Um, I added mine already there, but I'm going to go through the steps for how you can do this. So you need to be able to access your site setup and to do so, you need to be a site owner or support staff. Um, if you cannot see site setup, um, I think you need to contact your admin person or someone who will be able to give you access to that site as a support staff or site owner. Now to add a tool, you go to site setup and then click on manage tools. And here's the list of tools that you can add to your Vula site. Um, I'm going to go down to Lexa videos. So click Lexa videos, um, go down, say continue and confirm finish. Okay. So now Vila added this lecture videos tool to the left hand menu towards the bottom. We can see it's added here. So click on that. And it gives you the details of your, your um, you as the organizer. You have to click next to the My Responsibilities um, checkbox in order to activate the Get Started button. So once you click on my responsibilities, then say get started. Okay. <clears throat> it may take a uh, few tries. There we go. Okay, so I, because I have a lecture videos to already, it, uh, it added what I had in that one. Um, so, but if you, yours will be blank, so you won't have any new ones in your lecture videos. It will just, under recordings, you won't have anything listed here. Um, okay, so I'm going to stop here because um, Stefan will take over um, about how to create the video in, in lecture videos, which is where OpenCost is. Um, and I'm going to jump ahead to what would be the end of your process. Okay, so but at the end of your process, hopefully you will be adding your video to your lessons page. Okay, so where's my lessons page now? Okay, lesson for demo. Um, so here I have my lessons page. It is a sample lessons page created by Silt. Um, so you can, you can uh, download it or import it into your Vila site. And I want to add my video from my lecture videos. So I go, I go to the um, little add button, the bottom right corner. Then, do we have a question? Did someone want to speak up? Okay. Then I click on add learning app. And then I click on open cost video. And then I click on launch external to configuration and Vila will take me to my um, to my lecture videos. All, if, everything that I've created will be listed here. Let's say I want to add this video to my lessons page. Then I click select and Vila adds it to my lessons page. It's added as a link, but for to embed it in the lessons page, you click edit on the edit button next to that link. You click on in line in a box in the current page. Okay. I don't want this as a description, so I can delete that. And everything else is fine. And then you say update item. Let's see. Okay, so open cost, your open cost video is added to your lessons page. And it also includes all of the um, functionality that it would have in the lecture videos tool. You can play, go back, forwards, um, 
then you can also see descriptions, downloading options. So this is what the student would see. And also the transcript, the interactive transcript is added. So students can read along as they listen and they can also search for items specifically if they want to go to a specific part of the video. Um, and that is how you add a video from your lecture videos. So is there anything hmm. that, any questions or anything anyone would like to see again? Lauren, it's Carla Faree. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, could you just tell me, is the um, process exactly the same if one has taken, like you showed us yesterday, the PowerPoint um, presentation, created a video, uploaded that video to the lecture tools. Now you want to embed it into the lessons, you follow the same process. Exactly same, the exact same process, Carla. In my okay. lecture videos, um, I have I, I exported a narrated PowerPoint as a video and it's sitting there. I, I wanted to use that yesterday, but we ran out of time. So this is my um, narrated PowerPoint, that's now a video. So let's add it, let's see. It would look like the normal video that I added. So go to the plus button. Add learning app, open cast video, launch <laughs> external tool configuration. Where's that example narrated PowerPoint? Select. And then we have to make it in, embedded. So click on the edit button, click inline in a box in the current page, uh, delete the date. I don't want that. And say update item. So your narrated PowerPoint is now a video that will be added to your lesson space using this oh, process. That's, that's so awesome. there we go, there we go. Okay. okay. And you and have all of the same um, description downloads, right. transcript, yeah. And then um, all of these instructions and things, I, where, I went to the SILT website after last night's webinar or yesterday's webinar and it, it wasn't there. Where are these webinars recorded? The link, or uh, that it takes a while for the recording okay. to to reflect on the website. But we have resources um, like step by step documents that will take you through this process, so that you don't have to remember all of these new things after seeing it twice. Right. Um, so we um, we will be sending out all of the links to you. Um, afterwards so so okay so video and a, will get the links mm. okay. <coughs> excuse me it's the link to a google doc and a video that will um show you how to do these steps to add the videos sorry lauren okay. uh, it's raya hi hi uh, uh, just a little tip um when you edit those embedded videos if you just go to that editing window again uh, you see there's a height field over there. If you make that yes. height like 500, then it might have a bit more height and you can s see the play buttons. And That's a great things. tip. So you can see the whole video. Yeah, you should be able to. Should have a bit more okay. height so you can see the transcripts and all those. Yeah, there we go. Ah, so you don't have to scroll up and down yeah. inside, that, win inside that window. Okay, great. Cool. Thank you. Anything else before I hand over to... Stefan. Okay, I hope that was clear and helpful. Um, and we are here, as Laura said, we are here for if you need any assistance or a reminder or some help in um, adding your videos or using this using the lessons tool. Okay, cool. Over to you, Stefan. All right, so my demonstration is going to be on OpenCore Studio. It's a lot simpler than Lauren's um, stuff with many steps. Uh, so let me share my screen. Okay, I want to go out of PowerPoint. Okay, so. We go to Vula, right? Um, 
and we access the lecture videos that Lauren just showed us how to set up. So I'm going to use the same site as Lauren, the demo site for webinars. And to start the recording, you would have to click on the Manage tab. So I think by default, it opens up on the Recordings tab. And you won't see any option to, um, to record or upload videos. But once you click on Manage, you'll see over on the right side, there's a Record button, an Upload button, and Schedule and Timetable Scheduling. So we're going to focus on this Record button and the Upload button for today, because that's how we're going to get our videos on Tavula. So to get the Opencast uh, Studio, we click on Record. And you'll get a screen which asks you what you actually want to record. So display is going to be your screen, your computer screen, whatever's on there. And then camera is going to be your face, so your webcam recording you speak. So you can choose there if you want both, um, which is actually the superpower of OpenCast Studio, because um, PowerPoint doesn't really do this, or any of the other screen recorders. It doesn't um, take two recordings and allow the viewer to see them in real time as it was recorded together. So this is actually the biggest benefit to OpenCast Studio. It's being able to record both your screen and yourself and have the viewers zoom in on sections that they want to on the screen recording or your face if they want to. I don't see why they would want to zoom in on your face. But yeah, they can choose what they want to see best. All right, so I'm going to click display and camera for demonstration purposes. OK, so the next screen that pops up, it asks you what what screen you actually want to record beside the camera. OK, so the screen that I will choose to use in most cases is my entire screen because I don't like um, having to worry about switching between software and, um, and and things like that. So if you select your entire screen, it's going to record whatever's on the screen. OK, the other options are application window. So here you can select an application. So I can choose Zoom or, or uh, Google Chrome or PowerPoint, and it will record only that application. All right. And then you can choose to record a specific um, Google Chrome tab or Internet browser tab, depending on which Internet browser you're using. All right. Hi. Um, Laura, are you there? Me, Stefan, yes. Yeah, I've got someone here that needs to speak to me. Um, can you take over from here, from this point? Can I get right to take over? Because my internet's a bit unstable. Yeah, OK. Yeah, it should be fine. Sorry, right. Um, yeah, OK, that's fine. That's fine. okay I'll no stop problem. sharing. Sorry about that. No problem at all. OK, I'll thanks, Ray. Cool. OK, luckily, I do have everything set up. Let me just share my screen. All right, can everybody see my screen at the moment? Yep, it's up and clear. Cool, thank you. All right, so I'll pick up where Stefan left us. He was in the record option over here. All right, so he said you can choose your displays. Okay, so first it's going to ask me if I want to use a webcam. So let's check in this case, I will. So there's my webcam. Hello. And then, uh, so I'm using Firefox here. So the, the interface is going to be a little bit different to his because he was using Chrome. Um, so I'm going to have this drop down menu when he had the, the slightly larger menu. Okay, so let me just do entire screen like he did it. Cool. So what's going to happen here is going to have a slight mirror effect on the left hand side of the screen here. It's just because it's mirroring me inside myself every single time, 100 times there. So it's going to have that loop. If, uh, don't need to worry about that because 
um, it will be recording the entire screen the whole time. So if I go next, it's going to ask me for my microphone. Uh, I'm just going to set to my headset microphone. And if I talk now, you'll be able to see the waveform there. So you'll be able to know if it's recording or not. All right. So if I go back to my PowerPoint now, it, sh it should record that. So I can hit record over here. And you can see it's already three seconds in the recording at the bottom of the screen. So now I can go back to my recording over here on my PowerPoint and I can put it into full screen mode. Oh, I've got dual screens now at the moment, so I was just doing this. Uh, but let's say you're in full screen, it would look like this. Uh, I'm just going to stop this presentation. Okay, once I'm done with that, I can go back to my Firefox in my browser and I can stop it. Okay. And here you'll be able to review your recording. So you'll see this, the part on the left where it was recording my screen, that'll disappear once I go to PowerPoint because it's, it's recording the entire screen. So whatever's on the screen is going to be recording. Um, and then I just put it into presentation mode, but because I've got a second screen that was showing there, but I could, I'll just set that up differently. Um, you can review and then we've added this update recently so that you can top and tail the recording so for instance i'll be able to go to here when i started my presentation i click that button and i'll say it will only start at six seconds in and then i can go to where i finished my recording let's draw about there and I can tail it. So it'll say end at 30. So, and you can also preview just that part as well, or you can start from the beginning and it will actually say this part will be removed. So it will only come to life again. Okay, so this is what the, the final edit will look like essentially. Okay, once you're happy with that, you can go next. And here you'll be able to type in the title. So. It's just going to go read the not test and try. Cool. And you'll be able to upload to OpenCast with this button over here. But we recommend before you do that, on the right hand side of the screen here, there's options to download the video that you just recorded. So we always recommend to download them just as a backup in case the upload fails or your internet dies or anything like that happens or the load shedding happens god forbid um so yeah so we just recommend downloading on the right before so you just have a backup um and once that's done you can just upload to opencast and it'll take a few seconds and it should be done cool and then if you want you can do another recording same process again but if we go back to our vula tab now and we're in the manage tool and I arrange by date there's my recording that I just did now the webinar test and it's currently processing so it'll take it was a short video it should take about five minutes to process on the back side on on, on the back end um, and then once it's done or okay let me show you if the upload did fail and you had the backup then you'll just be able to go upload over here and then you'd be able to type in the um, title, your name, description if you want, and then you'll be able to browse for your video over here once you've downloaded it. But I was naughty and I didn't download it like I said I should. <laughs> so I won't have it now, but that is where you would be browse for it. And then you just go upload. <clears throat> um, yeah, so that is pretty much the open cost studio in a nutshell. Uh, does anybody have any questions before we move on to the next section. Um, hello, Rai. Thank you very much. It's Carla Faree. Hey. Um, Rai, are you still going to chat about the question that I think I asked in webinar one? Yes. When you're recording um, on OpenCast and you go to your PowerPoint and you start to go through each slide, 
you lose your double screen. You end up yeah. just seeing your PowerPoint slide and you can't see yourself. So you don't, mm. you can't really, you don't know where you're looking or what you're seeing, etc. And you said there's a way to see that double screen. Is okay. there? Yes. Okay. So I th think I understand your question correctly, but let me, let me just make sure. Okay. First of all, what I would do is I would first start the slideshow before I start open car studio, uh, before I click the record button here, I would go to my PowerPoint and I would go to start slideshow. So it's going to be in full screen now. And if I hold in alt and tab on my keyboard, then I would be able to switch between my apps. So if I go back to Bula and go hit record, just going to go select my webcam. Now I would go to the presentation view over here. So that's, you can see it's the full screen there. If I click on this one, that's the actual PowerPoint window where you would um, do your edits and um, create your slides and things like that. Oh, right there it is, yeah. So you just wanna make sure that you wanna do the full screen one um, in uh, presenter mode. And it will say, okay, cool. It'll show you here again and you just alt tab back to your recorder like you can see here and then I can go next just make sure I've got my microphone testing one two cool and I can hit record now now it's in full screen presentation mode over there recording um, but now I'll be able to alt tab back to that and now I can talk th through my presentation one two three four talk about this slide etc etc and then if I want to check on my camera every now and then I can just alt tab back to the screen over here and I can see my camera and I can see the presentation just to ensure that both of them are still going. And once I'm happy, go back to my presentation again, next slide, next slide, next slide. I think that's the question you were asking. Um, yeah, I mean, Ola. right. Ideally, what I would have liked your answer to be is that you would have seen a split screen and while I'm on the right hand side recording, with my camera on the left hand side is my presentation and I can go click, 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 click and talk through and not mm. have to be tabbing. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And the the easy way to do that, I'd, it, it would be to have a second monitor, um, but I know not everybody has one like that. If I mean, I, I suppose what like I'm that. asking mm. is for a similar thing that we get to in PowerPoint, right? Where you, when you're recording, you can go to your, presentation and then you mm. see yourself on the right hand side or whatever the case is mm. um, and if you are if your camera screen and webcam and etc allows for it and you're standing up and doing something on a board then you can mm. see what the students can see but not in this you're having to tab and then it just becomes mm. crazy i understand that yeah i'm just trying to see if there's a way that i can do that like this but then it's not that it doesn't look that great, I guess. But I guess this is a little bit of a hack if I could call it that. Let me just see. If I just split my um, browser window on the right and keep my presentation on the left like that. So now, as you can see now, I can go through. It's just a bit smaller, you know, it's not the best, but that's probably going to be the best way to get around it. It is a bit hard to get here, but that's probably the way to get around it unless you want to switch between apps to see yourself every now and then to make sure everything's all right. Okay. Thanks, Rai. Um, oh, no problem. Yeah, is, is, was, was it clear enough or does, or, or, or would you like to go through it again, Stefan? Or? Uh, yeah. So, um speaking to that that question like getting them up split screen yeah without without two screens i also don't know of a way to do it other than what that i did now we are splitting it into two um rai i think that that step might where you split it can you repeat that process where you split the um, the browser into the two and you add your PowerPoint on the left-hand side. I think that would be very handy, but can you just repeat it quickly? 
what you did because it was very fast. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, okay, let me just get everything up again. Um, yeah, I, I was just trying to see if I could get um, the presenter view full screen because that would be ideal. But let me just take yeah. you through that again. Rai, I don't think you're sharing yeah, your screen. I'm on it now. All okay. right, you should be able to see me now. Yeah, we can see you. All right, let me just get this up quick. Um, that's the one. Okay. All right, so in Windows 10, at least, I know that if you uh, take your mouse to the top of the uh, window, and you click and you hold and you drag it, you'll be able to reposition it. Um, and if you drag it all the way to the left hand side of the screen, you'll see it will actually fill up half like that. So if I take it all the way to the left and I'll let go, it'll fill up the left half of the screen. And then on the side, it'll ask me which window I would want the right hand side of the screen to be. So then I'll just pick that one. And then you could maybe adjust this a little bit, just make it bigger. Um, yeah. All right, there we go. That's a good view. I think this is reading mode, reading view. All right, so see, it's this one over here, reading view. Yeah, RF reading view. That's actually a good view. Um, and then let me just get this. Test one, two. All right. So here I'll be able to go left and right. And it takes up most of the screen, which is quite nice. So this is in reading view in PowerPoint. And then once I'm done, I can click stop. And great. That's it. Cool. And Rai, what's important to remember there was you chose to record the application window, right? Yes, that's correct. Yes. Yeah. So if you window, yeah. if you choose full screen mode uh, with Rai's little hack then it's going to make a mirror effect. So you have to choose the application mode if you want to see yourself like I just did and the, the PowerPoint. Um, yeah. So that is a great hack. Thank you, Rai. No okay. Problem. Hope it made sense. <laughs> yeah. And then Rai, um, there's ICTS people looking for you. Uh, about the camera in the green meeting room. Okay, so I'll continue. I'll share my screen now. Okay, this is share the entire screen. So there's just a function. Um, oh, I need to switch my camera off and then refresh. Okay. Share my entire screen. It's a function that I didn't speak to. Um, I've selected my microphone. I click next. I record, blah, blah, blah. And you can switch between apps. And we can press stop. And once you're done, there is the play button over there. And then there's these scissor icons over here. So these are trimming icons. Dave? Yes? Um, Rai did take us through that. It was the Okay, the trimming. Bit. Yeah, he did. He showed how to trim it and then that it will show it's, that, it, that it will be removed. Um, yeah. Okay, perfect. All right, then we can move on to what happens to the video after you're done recording, right? So you went to the next page and Rai showed you all of this. On the right hand side, did I go through the downloads? Um, he did, yes, he did warn us okay. to download in case the upload um, doesn't go yeah. through. Okay. And there was a question about would it be best to download both files or uh, just yes, one? Yes, definitely, yes, yes. Um, <laughs> okay. The only yeah. thing with that is at this point in time, um, you will download the two videos separately. So the one will just be the camera feed and then the other one will be the presentation or your screen or your PowerPoint. Um, unfortunately, it, it is then two separate video files. Um, and I believe that there is a ticket open on in the development team to be able to upload two videos to one event. But yeah. at this point in time, you'll actually have to edit those two videos together to make one. But 
but as long as you have a backup, we'll be able to assist with that, or the VLAB team will be able to assist with that. It's not an issue. Okay. So uh, we've got we've got past this point. Once this is done, once you've clicked upload, it'll take you. You'll go back to your Vula site, and the video will show up on this list. I see the comments are flickering. Uh, Lauren or Laura, please feel free to bring it up as I go along. No, I'm answering them That's... in the chat. Thank you. Oh, okay. Okay. So um, you've got your videos over here. It shows up under manage and in recordings, right? So the next thing that we want to see is how to create, um, how to create a transcript for it, right? A more accurate transcript. So with every video, when it uploads, you'll get an email, uh, which I'll show you now. So I've uploaded this video earlier. Um, and here we go. So you'll get an email that says, Google Speech Captions have been published for the webinar. So this email uh, needs to be updated because things are, are slightly different. So you can't follow the instructions completely. Um, over here, it says you click on the, the CC icon. So for the current version of uh, Vula or, or OpenCost, uh, you don't have to click on the CC icon, you click on the pencil icon, but I'll show you that now. So I'm over here and if I want to see the the transcript, you can go to recordings, click on play. And down at the bottom, you can navigate to the transcript tab. You'll see that the automatic or automated um, transcription or captioning will be there. And you can you can have a look, but it won't always be as accurate as you want it to be because it's it's a robot or a computer doing it and not a human actually listening to it. So uh, if you want to get a more accurate transcript, you go back to the lecture videos window and you click on manage. And next to the particular video that you want uh, better transcriptions for, you click on this pencil or the CC there. Okay. If you don't have the if you don't have the CC, you can click on the pencil. So yeah, CC will offer you editing of the captions, or over here if you want the way with words transcription service, which is uh, actual humans listening to your audio and typing, uh, uh, transcribing it, then you would click there. So once you click to request better captions, it's gonna send it away and it will tell you that it will come back in two to five working days um, from the submission now. So uh, there is a screening process which classroom services would do. Um, before they send it away. So if it takes longer, um, it might be that there's an issue with with your video. And that's another thing that I wanted to cover. So uh, sometimes we don't want to create new videos. We just want to upload videos that we've already recorded in the, in the lecture venues or at home or anywhere. And you want to use this captioning service. So things to consider when uploading older videos when you use this function, the upload function, um, which I'll take you through now quickly. Uh, so you'd have to give a title for a video when you're uploading it. And then you would click on choose video. And then you would simply select a video um, anywhere on your computer. And you say open. And yeah, you can choose to create automatic captions for it. Or you can switch that off if you don't want the automatic captions, it will uh, save some processing time. And you click upload. All right. So then your video will show up over here once it's done processing. And the status will be over there. So uh, the considerations with 
transcribing, why sometimes you might not get a transcription back in time is that with the lecture recordings, there is um, noise. So sometimes uh, uh, the lecturer would, or you would ask the students um, a question and they would reply, but they won't have a mic on them. So the lapel in the venues will be only on the lecturer and they won't be able to hear or make out. So then the transcription service, because it's so much trouble for them to just uh, get that, that quiet space where they can't make out or the noisy space where they can't make out the words, they don't transcribe it. So they'll just send a message back to, to classroom services saying, we're not gonna do this. And that could be a reason why you get a delay. So we would ask you then, uh, if you have videos like that, where there is parts that are noisy um, and, and it's, it's big stretches in the video that you would have to cut out that video. And the software we recommend for cutting out of videos is Shotcut, but we're not gonna demonstrate Shotcut for today. Uh, so we ask that you book a consultation with us and then we'll take you through using Shotcut one-on-one um, -on -one, and we'll go through that entire process. Um, so yeah, Shotcut is how you would cut up videos, older videos that have noise or say um, you recorded it and your voice is very far away. You also won't get um, transcription for that. But if the audio is nice and clear, the transcription can be done by way with words. And yeah, you can edit the automated uh, transcription on your own as well by clicking on that CC icon. All right. Uh, if the CC icon doesn't show, there's a pencil icon over there. And once you click on captions, you can request better captions there as well. And that is the way with words transcription as well. But for the most, the, the CC should show. All right, so those, this is uh, how to get your videos up um, in an open car studio. And the same thing applies for, for the narrated PowerPoint, right? All these benefits, the, the free uh, transcription is there. Um, but yeah, we, we do want to, um, we do want to encourage that you check and, and edit the automated transcription. If you have the time, if you don't have the time, requesting with way with words is also fine. Okay. So are there any questions for this process? And if they aren't, we can get onto some of the questions that we had yesterday and just make sure that everybody uh, has the information that they needed from these three webinars. Thank you, Stefan. There's nothing in the chat. Um, people are asking for the resources, <clears throat> sorry, the resources, okay. which we'll, we'll, we'll send it um, back by the end of the week. Um, but yes, if anybody has any questions, please um, go ahead and ask. Uh, okay, is there a time limit for recordings in OpenCast? No, uh, OpenCast doesn't have a time limit. Uh, Lauren with the, the learning design guides, um, the only limit would be the concentration span, I think. <laughs> but that's a limit on yourself how long you of, want to make your students, videos of your yeah. students <laughs> but i also yeah. just comment on that as well um i sure. would also recommend not really doing more than 15 20 minute videos i mean just in case there's load shedding just in case there's a drop in network i mean my internet has gone down every single month for the last week so and things like that happen just in case you record an hour long video and then something happens and it's an hour wasted and you have to redo the entire thing again so that that we normally recommend shorter videos and then it's quicker to upload uh, uses less space um, things like that All right, so yesterday uh, we had a few questions about uh, microphones, green screen, 
Um, I can't remember what all the questions were. If if those same questions are there, uh, I'll speak to the green screen. Um, if that's all right, uh, Laura and Lauren, please tell me if any questions popped up. Maybe I can stop the share and open up the chats myself. Okay. So green screen. Green screen, I won't recommend um, be simply because it's cutting out a color and it's uh, you need software to do it. And Teams does a very good job without even having to put a green uh, screen behind you and getting software to cut it out, right? So Teams would be the easy hack um, for green screen and you need to get your lighting right and all of that. So green screen is a bit of a, uh, um, it's, it's complex to pull off effectively and you wouldn't really pull it off more effectively than Teams would uh, if you don't set it up properly. So that's my thoughts on green screen. I would just use Teams, record myself and insert that into my PowerPoint and export that as a video. And then there was a question about the microphones. Uh, if I've got, I think somebody said, if I've got a microphone, should I plug that in and use that? So now there's, there's um, the type of microphone is going to be, your answer will differ uh, due to the type of microphone. So if you bought a lapel that has, that's made for like cell phones or laptops, um, then it would always be better to plug that microphone in. But if you've got a handheld microphone that you use for karaoke on uh, your boombox or your hi-fi system, that mic won't always work. It might be bad um, because the, the amplification won't sound good. It's going to be noisy and it's not made for for using with your computer. So you'll need an audio interface and then things become complicated as well. So I wouldn't recommend using a, a normal handheld microphone um, and plug that into your laptop. Okay, um, so the type of microphone that you're using um, is important. Use the ones that are made for, for laptops or use the USB microphones because then everything will be plug and play and you'll have clear sound from there. Okay. And then I can't remember what the other questions were. If anybody has any questions um, across the three webinars, um, please post it now and we'll do our best to, to respond to it. I know there was the issue around the exposure using Mac we are going to get back to, to that as soon as we've experimented a bit with the Mac. So thanks everyone. Now is your chance to either unmute yourself and we can discuss things or post in the chat. Thank you, Steph. Um, I don't see anything in the chat. If anyone um, can think of anything to ask, now is a good time while well, you have um, Stefan and Fry here. In Teams would record from a test meeting. Uh, um, I said I couldn't join yesterday, so if you missed your demo on recording in Teams. Okay, so maybe I should go through that quickly, Mashudu. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna share my screen again. All right, so usually when you're in Teams, uh, oops, I, <laughs> I'm trying to find something. Okay, test recording. All right, let me check the, take this one. So usually when you're in Teams, when you start a new chat, you can't really record yourself. So you have to make a calendar meeting um, with no attendees, like you don't invite anyone. So you just tick that it's a Teams meeting and you set that recording 
to uh, whichever date, right? Or whichever time. I usually do it for the current time. And then you join that meeting from your calendar and the screen will pop up, right? So once you've joined, you'll have the chat and everything like it's like you see it here now. So then you can click join. And for green screen effects or cutting out your background, you're gonna click on background filters. You wanna blur uh, or add a beach. In this case, I'm gonna blur. I don't want everybody to see my uh, what's behind me. So I'm gonna double click on it. And that will be my background effect. I can then click the X on the top and I can say join now, right? So this is way more effective or it's much simpler to do than to actually put a green screen behind you, set up lights, uh, get software to chroma key out the green uh, because it does all of it automatically and it's very quick. So now you've got yourself on the screen and you can um, click on the three, let me just hide my floating panel. You can click on the three buttons, uh, the three dots, more actions, and you can click start recording, right? So then it's gonna record the meeting as if you would a normal Teams meeting. And you can access that video by stopping the recording. Oh, what's important to notice is uh, it's not recording if the icon, the recording icon on the top left is gray and not red. It's only recording when it's red, all right? So when you're done, you click on the more actions, the three dots, and you click stop recording again. Say stop recording, and you can leave the meeting once that's done, right? When you go out of the meeting screen, you will see that it will process your recording. So it says recording and stop saving recording to Microsoft Stream. All right, once you're done there, you click on uh, open in Microsoft Stream. And this is to, to download your video so you can insert it in your uh, narrated PowerPoint or a video software of your choosing. Okay, so the video will play in Microsoft Stream. And if you scroll down to the three dots there again, more actions, you can download that video. All right, so you download the video and when you're done, you can say show in folder and then you can drag that video to PowerPoint and drop it in there. And it's already in the format that PowerPoint likes it to be. So that way you've recorded yourself with green screen effects. And yeah, that's a very simple way to cut out your background if, if you need to. I right. mean, you can you can also use that video as is and upload it to Lex videos and yeah, you don't have to video. insert it to PowerPoint. Yeah. yeah, you can upload it directly as well. It's in MP4 format, so uh, lecture videos will accept it, and it's it's there. All right. Stephen, uh, what if you um? Sorry, I have a question. <laughs> what if yes. you um? you record yourself in Teams and you, you share your screen, would that be recorded as well or only your face? Uh, just repeat that for me, Lauren. If, if, you, you, if, you, if, you, um, if you're in the Teams meeting, right? Yeah. And you want to, say, you want to, um, uh, you want to talk about a PowerPoint or a, yeah. a document or something. Oh, yes, and, that was actually someone's question as well. So say you want to talk to a document, you can record that in in Teams as well. So you would share um, you would share your screen like normal, right? So I want to share my screen one. And then I'll open up my PowerPoint. And this will be the focus now your your face will be recorded. But what will happen is your face will be smaller in the corner on the side and the PowerPoint will be what is big on the screen uh, when recording. So then you'll, you'll put it in presenter mode 
and you'll have it nice and big. And yeah, so that's how you would do it as normal. All right, so let me get out of Teams sharing. Okay, let me just close that. Yeah, I'm, I've got two screen shares, so it's a bit busy. All it's right. Thin. Yeah, does that answer um, your question, Lauren? Yes, it does. Okay. Um, we have three minutes left, and I want to know if there are anyone else with any other questions. If not, we can wrap this up and um, we will definitely send out the email. Don't worry, we'll send it out um, before the end of the week. We just need to collate everything for you um, and summarize some of the questions to respond to. Um, but thank you everyone for coming. It was wonderful having you and, and I really hope that you um, We'll have some fun playing around with recording yourself and making videos and um oh just... and lauren uh let me drop the consult uh link in the chat as well okay so if if you need individual um consultations one-on-one -on -one, i'm gonna drop that link and you can let us know we can sort you out Okay. We will Let also me just... add. We, we can also add that link to the email. So um, okay, perfect. So some then... people have left already, so they okay. won't see it in the chat. But we'll we'll add it to the email too. Um, okay. All right. Thanks, okay. everyone. That's the end of our webinar series, and we are here to help you make good content for your students. All right. Thanks, Lauren. Thanks, Rai. Thanks, Laura. Thank you, Steve. Everybody that attended. Okay. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Cool. Right. Bye. -bye. Bye.